Jesus. excitement in this place today. God is going to do some amazing things and we want to just give him praise, glory, and honor. We thank you, God, for who you are in our lives and we thank you that you've touched us. We've never been the same. Come on, put your hands together.
into the night Wanting a place to hide this weary soul This bad bones So I try with all my might But I just can't win this fight I'm slowly drifting A bad Come on, put your hands together morning that you're not the same person that you were before I cannot deny what I've seen got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning like ashes and wind so so long to my old friends burning and bitterness you can't just keep on moving now you ain't well another one. Can you say that this morning? Hell off another one. Hallelujah. experience the love of God, if you know that it's real, then you know why you're singing. If you haven't experienced it today, today is your day. Today you're in the right place. You're going to feel how much love God loves you. You're going to know it. It's going to be deep down in your heart, something you're gonna, you cannot deny. And today God's going to give you an opportunity to do something about it. Amen. Amen. Well, who, who had some rain fall on them today? Anybody in the house? Anybody just a little bit of rain come down? Oh, 
Well, I was reading in Deuteronomy 32, verse 2, and it says this. Oh, this is God saying this. He says, let my teaching fall on you like rain. That is my prayer today, that the teaching of God would fall on us like rain, that his words would come down and rain on us. Let them go deep into our soul. I love when you get really, really wet. You know, the kind of wet like when we're walking my dog. And her little, her little ears are dripping. They're just saturated. That's how I want to be in the presence of God. I want to be completely saturated with Him. I want to hear it because His words, His words bring life. Amen? And that's what you and I need today. Oh, this morning say, I'm ready for God's word to fall on me today like rain. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I want to welcome you to the Lord's house today. I'm Pastor Linda Hicks. I serve on a staff here at our church. And today, before you sit down, would you welcome someone and say, I hope you get wet. Amen. Food gives life. It's one of our basic human needs. The problem is there are one billion people who are hungry. But together, we have the ability to change that. Now imagine how the world would look different if you could help get food from here to there. So everyone would have something good to eat. There'd be no more empty stomachs. No one worrying if they'd make it another day. People would be able to work, able to learn, able to care for their children, able to pursue better lives for themselves and the ones they love. We can do this. We are doing this together. Already, thousands of children in nine different countries wake up each morning knowing that a nutritious meal waits for them at school. Kids who deserve an education and a chance to dream because they are the future of their nations. The need is big. We have nearly 100,000 children waiting outside the fences, outside the schools. But together, we can do this. We can feed one. Now more than ever, we are determined to make sure that everyone has something good to eat. Join us today and make a difference in the life of a child. everybody. Good morning. So good to see you today. Welcome to the House of the Lord. As you just saw in the video today, one of the signature partnerships of our church is an incredible organization called Convoy of Hope. You might have seen Convoy of Hope. You might have seen Convoy of Hope on the news. Uh, this is one of the leading Christian organizations uh, in our country that, dis that responds to disaster relief around the world. In fact, if you remember Hurricane Katrina uh, back in New Orleans many years ago, lots of different organizations went for a while uh, to serve and they took pictures and they raised money and they helped. But five years later, Convoy of Hope is still there on the ground serving those that were in need. It's really an incredible organization. But one of the ways that we partner with Convoy of Hope as a church is in their feeding initiative, their children feeding initiative. And one of the amazing things about this organization is due to uh, the resourcefulness and due to the diligence of this organization, they feed a child in an impoverished nation of the world every school day for only $10 a month. What an impact you and I can make for just $10 uh, to feed a child every school day. What, what an amazing difference we can make in, as we partner with them. I don't know about you, those of you with children, I can't even feed my own child for $10 a day, much less $10 for, for every school day. I, 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 wished I, I wish I could feed them for $10. Um, but when we think about the opportunities that the Lord has given us as a church, and we think about what real ministry looks like, we're so very familiar with the ministry that happens on Sunday mornings in this room. 
But did you know that the real ministry of this church is not what happens just in an hour and a half or so on a Sunday morning, but what happens in our own community and around the world through the reach of this church seven days a week? Seven days a week. God calls us to care about those who are lost and hurting, those that are broken, those that are struggling, those that are suffering. And I know as we live in this climate, we live in this you know, financial environment today where there's so much uncertainty in the world. There's so much uncertainty politically. There is uncertainty with our finances and inflation the way that, that it is. And it's causing us to be a little bit conservative. But today, I, I want to ask today if maybe beyond your regular normal giving, beyond your regular tithe and support of the work of the Lord, which we're so very grateful for, we couldn't do what we do without you, maybe beyond that, maybe you have a separate pocket for compassion. Maybe today, beyond your regular giving, there's another $10 that you could give through the ministry of this church to support Convoy of Hope to change the life of a child forever. Now, you likely will not ever meet this child but the Lord knows who this child is, and I just believe that someday when we get around the throne of God, that the reward will be great because of what we did in this life and the difference that we make. Can I, can I give you some good news? Well, the statistics about hunger around the world are very dire, but let me give you the good news. Last year, last year, 2023, because of your generosity, many of you saying, I'll come alongside you, Pastor Lauren, and I'll, I'll support one child, or two children, or five children a month every single month to feed these hungry children around the world. Because of your generosity, last year, every school day, you and I, we fed 240 children this last year. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank God. So every spring, every spring, we come to you once again. This is not, we don't talk about this every Sunday. We don't talk about it all the time. Usually it's one Sunday a year. But in the spring, we remind you that there's still hungry children in the world. I'm just convinced that there should be no hungry children in the world. Amen. I thought I might get a little bigger amen on that. Amen. I'm convinced there should be no hungry children in the world. And everybody can make a difference. And think about it. I think $10, we can find it somewhere. Uh, yesterday, I was at Starbucks and I bought a small vanilla latte decaf because it's later in the day. $5.55. I thought, wow. Two of those I could have fed a child. So I want to invite you today to join us and to make a difference. When you came in today, you received a worship guide. It looks like this. Probably were handed one. And if you would like to grab that and open up on the inside, uh, you'll look. And also on the back cover, it says that you can make a difference. $10 feeds a child for an entire month. Our goal this year, 2024, is to add 50 children. That's our goal today. So on the, on the back page, it talks about some giving information. At the bottom, there's some statistics for you to read but at the top there's a qr code there you can use your phone and you can go straight to our church's giving page you can drop down in the menu find convoy of hope what i would encourage you to do is as you support ten dollars a month or twenty whatever the lord puts upon your heart to do that you'd hit the button that says recurring gift monthly that way every month that right from your debit card or your credit card that you would go that the support of these children would not stop and we can be generous in this way you can also give if you don't do digital giving you can give by cash or check with your offering envelope but we would ask that beyond your regular giving, to have a heart of compassion today to make a difference uh, in the life of a child. It's hard for us because we are, uh, dis we are distanced from them. If we could see them, if we were walking through their village, if we walked through our, there's no doubt that our hearts would be so touched. But because they're far away, it's easy for them to not be in our mind. But can I tell you today that these children, these children, everybody, are on the heart of God. Amen. They're on the heart of God. And if they're on the heart of God, May they be on our hearts. So today, perhaps, uh, the Lord would speak to you to feed one child or two children or five children or ten or whatever God would put upon your heart to do to make a difference. At this time uh, in our service, we're going to invite our ushers to come and give us an opportunity to give for our regular tithe and offering to support the ministries of the church here today. And let me just take a moment as the pastor of the church to say thank you. Those of you who give of your tithe, those of you who give of your offerings to support the work of the Lord here uh, not just once in a while, but many of you give every single week or every single month. You give to support God's work here. Thank you so very, very much for the difference that you're making uh, in the kingdom of God right here, uh, not only in Santa Maria, but on the Central Coast and around the world as we support our missionaries globally all over the world. What, the difference. I believe that a local church can make a difference. Anybody believe that? A local church can make a difference. And together we are, we are doing this. I'm happy to tell you that yesterday... 
Yesterday, Pastor Phil and our missions team got back home from Peru. Thank you for praying for them. Thank you for praying for them. They had an incredible week of ministry uh, in, per in Peru. They had a great time doing some construction work and ministry and leadership training. We're so proud of the team that went. And there's going to be more opportunities down the road. Some of you are going to go on mission trips and we're going to make disciples. We're going to obey the command of Jesus and make disciples of all nations. So I want to encourage you to prepare your heart and get your passport and get ready to go. Uh, our team had a great time. Pastor Phil sent me a lot of pictures this week and he sent me a really interesting picture of something at a restaurant on a plate and uh, it looked like a small animal and uh, I was trying to figure out what that was and then he responded and said guinea pig All right so so uh, come on everybody what's wrong with guinea pig come on <laughs> uh, thank the Lord there were other options you didn't have to eat guinea pig but I think some of our team members did so but they had a wonderful time making a difference. And some of you gave financially for the construction project. God bless you. God bless you for that. Today's going to be a great day. Can I tell you that today is Baptism Sunday? Yeah. Baptism Sunday. <laughs> and today I'm so excited to let you know that before service at our baptism class, we had over 30 people here who are going to be baptized today. We're so excited about that. But today is also, we do this twice a year, today is also Spontaneous Baptism Sunday. And what that means is, and what that means is, if some of you in this room, you know God's been leading you to be baptized. But you got up this morning, you didn't know you were going to be baptized. But today in this service, the Lord is going to speak to your heart. And you're going to take a step, a courageous step of faith. And you're going to be baptized today. We'll talk about that more in the service. It's going to be a wonderful day, wonderful day. Right after service, we have growth track. Uh, step two, for those of you who have gone to Growth Track, step one, going to be a great day. Youth service tonight. Thank the Lord for all that God's doing here in our church. Let's bow our heads before the Lord in prayer. Father, we love you today. And we're so thankful. You woke us up this morning, put breath in our lungs, strength in our body. You gave us a desire to come this morning. And we got up and we came to the house of the Lord. On this first day of the week, we came to put you first in our lives. Before we go to work, before we do anything else. We're starting this brand new week with you, Lord. And so we're here today. Would you have your way in this place? Would you speak to our hearts and our lives? Let today be a day of salvation. Let today be a day of spiritual growth in our lives. May today be a day that we honor, and praise, and worship our Savior. And Lord, as we give in this offering, Lord, may we hear your voice and be obedient to whatever it is you ask us to do. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Give us generous hearts just like you. Bless this church, God. We pray you bless the finances of the church, God, so that the work of God can continue to grow and expand and more people can come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. And I pray, God, that as a result of their giving today, God, you would bless your people in amazing ways. In Jesus' name, amen. All over this house, let's stand and get ready to enter back into worship through song. Those of us joining online, maybe remove all distractions. Let's just focus on Jesus this morning. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be glorified. He's worthy in our lives this morning. I know you look around and you say, what are, what's up with the shirts? If this is your first time here, what's up with the shirts? We made a decision to follow Jesus. And guess what? It's the best decision we've ever made in our lives. And so we proclaim that this morning. And so when we stand here in the presence of God, we just want to give him all glory and honor and power. Because if you were to hear every story in this room, 
people wearing the shirts and those aren't wearing the shirts who just love Jesus. We could be here all day telling about the goodness of God and the amazing experiences we've had. So we just want to just worship this morning. Will you join us? Come on, let's praise. Most worthy, worthy of praise, exalted above all things, my God, you are my God. Most splendor and majesty.
Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. Come on, someone help me give him glory this morning. Someone help me give him praise this morning. There's none like you, God. We surrender our hearts to you. God, we surrender our will to you. Lord, we surrender our problems to you this morning. God, we give you everything. We give you everything because you are everything, Lord. Thank you for who you are in our lives. Thank you for showing us your love. We just want to sing your praise this morning. You know, there's a, there's a scripture in Psalms 150, verse 6. One of my favorite scriptures, and it says, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I wonder, did you wake up with breath in your lungs this morning? It's just I'll take one nice, big, deep breath if you can, and just let that out. Whew, glad we all brushed our teeth this morning, amen. We got breath in our lungs this morning. And because God blessed us with that breath, we ought to give him praise. Because the scripture says if we don't sing, the rocks will cry out. And I don't know about you, but I don't want a rock taking my place. I want to give God praise. So as we sing this next song, it simply says, shout to the Lord, all the earth. Let us sing his praises. Hallelujah. everybody. in all kinds of languages in the world. So why don't we just worship him in Spanish for a little bit this morning.
The song says, with every breath, with all that I have, all that I am, may we never cease to praise our God. With the breath that God has given us, the breath in our lungs, may we worship Him, may we praise Him. And you know, not just on a Sunday morning, but forever and ever and ever, we're going to praise Him. We're going to worship Him. He's a great God. He's a mighty God. Do you know Him? Do you know Him today? Praise God. Praise God. Before you're seated, let's say thank you to Pastor Moses and the team. Thank you, guys. God bless you. You may be seated, everybody. You may be seated today. Let's get right to work. If you brought a Bible with you today, turn to me in the New Testament to the book of Romans, the fifth chapter. Romans chapter 5. If you're new to the Bible, it's the sixth book in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and Romans. The fifth chapter is where we're going to take our text this morning. So go ahead and open your Bible. Maybe you have a Bible app on your smartphone. Feel free to power that up at this time. Maybe you have the Pacific Christian Center app on your phone. There's a Bible on there that you can use. If you've not downloaded our church app, you can do so at your app store. But today I want to share a message with you very simply called, Why Should I Be Baptized in Water? Why should I be baptized in water? This is Baptism Sunday, and no doubt today, as you witness, many of you witness the, the number of people that are going to be baptized today, you're going to be thinking about your own baptism. How many of you remember when you were baptized? Anybody? Let me see your hand. Remember your baptism? What an important moment that was in your life when you said, I'm going public with my faith in Jesus. I had a private moment of faith. But now I'm going public. I'm not ashamed of Jesus. I'm letting the world know. I'm telling everybody what Jesus has done in my heart and in my life. So what a great day this is going to be. Baptism is such a significant moment in the life of a believer. You know, baptism is not just a religious ritual. It's not just an old tradition. Baptism is something that Jesus commanded us to do. Baptism means that we are following Jesus. Baptism is a symbol of letting the old world and the old life before Christ go, and now we are taking on new life in Jesus Christ. How many of you in this room have a BC, a before Christ, a life before Christ? Anybody have BC? All right, come on, some of you. I know some of you. You got to know some of your story. But that's all of us, isn't it? All of us who've come to know Jesus as our Savior and Lord, we, we had a life before Christ. And we have a life, a story of, of an empty life before we met the Lord. We have a story of our sins and failures and our mistakes and lots of things. As we look back on our life, we look back with some regret and we, we say, man, I wish I'd done things differently. I wish I would have made better choices. I wish I had not messed up. I wish I had not failed. But when we come to Jesus and we put our faith in him, the Bible tells us that God washes all of our sins away in the precious blood of Jesus. And we stand before him righteous, not in our own righteousness in terms of what we have done and our own good works, but we stand righteous before the Father through the blood of Jesus and what Christ has done for us. We're so grateful today. I'm thankful today that when God looks at me and when he looks at you, God's not seeing the record of our sins and our mistakes. That's a good place to say amen. Aren't you thankful tonight? I know we remember how life used to be, the things we were involved in, the things that happened in our, in our lives. But God has set us free by his grace. Can I, can I just say something? David, can I just acknowledge you this morning? Is that okay? Can I, can I, I don't mean to embarrass you today. Sitting here out in the front road, David, today, is it 14 years? 14 years ago today, David decided through the power of God to become sober. 14 years ago today. Amen, amen, amen. And you know what? By his own testimony, he would say, it's all because of Jesus. All because of Jesus and what God has done in his life. You know, last year I, I saw a video online of a small church in Siberia. Now, you think it's cold in Santa Maria. <laughs> I've never been to Siberia, and I don't plan to, but never say never to God. I've learned that. But this small church had gathered in the wintertime, and maybe it's always winter in Siberia, I don't know. But they had gathered at a small lake, and I watched this small group of people, not more than 20 of them, gather in that frigid weather. The ground was covered with snow. The lake was frozen over. 
And I watched the pastor go out on that lake with an ax and chop holes in that, in that frozen lake. They chopped out a trench of water where the pastor then would step down and a lady from the church walked into that ice cold water and were baptized as the church family stood with their coats wrapped around them on the, on the banks and she baptized. I tell you, I watched that video with tears coming down my face at such devotion, she wanted to be baptized. And you know, social media is what it is. Reading the comments of people on social media, people are like, why didn't you wait till summer? And you know, da, 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 and all this kind of, all this. But there was something in the heart of that woman when she made a decision to follow Jesus. She wanted to go and be baptized in obedience to Jesus. And even if it take chopping up the frozen water of the lake so that they could get in and be baptized, she was willing to do it. What a testimony, what a powerful testimony. Well. I got good news for you, everybody. Those of you getting baptized, we got the hot water heater fixed. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it costs about $500 to do that. So thank you for your giving. Thank you for your generosity. But we got it fixed. Last time we had baptism, it was pretty cold. Up there. Not Siberia cold, but it was pretty, pretty cold. But today the water is warm. Every time we have baptism, I think about my own baptism. And this morning, as I was up early, looking over my sermon notes and preparing for today, I was thinking back when I stepped into a baptismal tank, just like we have here at our church, a very similar setup, a much smaller church, but a very similar setup where we had the baptism tank there behind the wall. At seven years old, I'd gone up to the pastor of our church, Pastor Marvin Russell, and I told him I, I wanted to be baptized. My parents didn't push me to do it. No one coaxed me to do it. I wasn't forced to do it, but I, I made a decision at seven years old that I wanted to be baptized. And I'll never forget Pastor Russell leading me into that water. Such a wonderful, kind pastor that I grew up with. And Pastor Russell, he looked at me and he said, Lauren, have you confessed Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? At seven years old, I had done that. He said, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross and he rose again as payment for your sins? And I, at seven years old, I, I believed that. And Pastor Russell said, Lauren, because you have confessed Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And he put me under that water as a testimony of my faith. And he brought me back up. And today at home, I still have the little certificate that the church gave me at seven years old. Now, when we baptize children, you might be tempted to think that these children are being baptized because their parents are getting them baptized, or well, that's what you do, you take your kids to church, but that's not what's happening in this church. And you might be tempted to think, well, can a seven-year-old really understand? Well, can I tell you all these years later, I'm 53 years old, I'm telling you, it worked. It worked. 53 years, or all these years later, I'm still serving Jesus, still serving Jesus as my Savior and Lord. So today, in just a few moments, um, I'm going to preach a short message. I know you don't think that's possible, but I, I'm going to do my best to preach a short message, and, and we're, going to have, we're going to have baptism, and we're going to celebrate. So can, let me just say a couple things to you right at the beginning. When, when we get to the baptism, can I ask you today, if at all possible, please don't leave, okay? Don't leave thinking we're going to beat the Baptist to the restaurant, okay? Please, let's, beca because, and I know, I, they, I love my Baptist friends, but they get out early, but I, but Please don't leave. Here's, here's, here's why. For these 30 or so people that are getting baptized today, this is one of the most important moments in their entire life. And they need every one of us cheering and celebrating and rejoicing with them, right, at what they're doing. So let me just ask you that. I also want to just remind you today that today is Spontaneous Baptism Sunday. And we don't do this every time, but we're doing it today. And there are people in the room today that you have put your faith in Jesus. You've trusted the Lord, but you've never been baptized. Maybe there's some people in this room, you've been saved a long time ago, but you were never baptized in water. Today, you should be baptized in water. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I'm not prepared to be baptized. I, you know, I didn't bring anything. Well, guess what? Today, I have about 50 pairs of black knee-length gym shorts and I got baptism shirts. I'll give you one. I'll give you one. We got everything you need. We got men's changing rooms, women's changing rooms. I've taken away every excuse, right? So today you can be baptized. Today you can be baptized. It's pretty amazing what the Lord's doing in our church. Would you agree? Amen. It's truly amazing. It's truly amazing. 
We are living in the time of revival. We are living in revival. Where God awakens his church and brings new life. We are witnessing it. We are, we are watching this happen in our lifetime. It's incredible. I've been a pastor now. This is 30 years this year that I've been a, a full-time pastor. 30 years. I've never in 30 years witnessed what I'm seeing God do in our church. I, I, it's incredible. It's incredible. And so we're so fortunate because we're in a time where we get to watch what God is doing. It's not because of us. I'm doing what I did. I'm doing what I've been doing for 30 years, preaching on Sunday. But we're watching God do it. We plant, we water, but God gives the increase. So last year, I'll just give you an example. Last year, our church grew, our average attendance grew by 300 people last year. I mean, where does that happen? How does that, I don't even know how that happens. God is bringing people. You're inviting family and friends and co-workers and saying, you need to come and experience what God is doing. It's incredible what God is doing. In the, in the fall of 2022, the last six months of 2022, as a church, we baptized one person. Towards the end of that year, our staff who was here in the room, you'll remember, in a staff meeting, I... I came to the staff meeting that week and I said, listen guys, lots and lots of people are getting saved through the ministries of our church, through our children's ministry, through our student ministry on Sunday mornings, through our compassion ministries. Many people are coming to faith in Jesus, but there's a missing piece here in discipleship. God's always calling us to take a next step. It doesn't matter how long you've served Jesus as your Savior and Lord, there's another step forward in your spiritual growth. And for many, baptism is that next step, yet there's a disconnect in our church. How can so many people be getting saved and we only baptize one person in six months? And so our team met and we prayed together. We had a great discussion and I began to ask the team, let me, let me hear your thoughts. How can we see baptism increase in our church? And they, they began to talk and I began to write things down uh, on the whiteboard. And we prayed and we committed that in 2023 that we'd see a lot of people be bapt follow Jesus in baptism. God didn't call us just to make converts, but also to make disciples. And I didn't announce it to you, but in my heart and in my own personal prayer time, I asked God that in 2023 we would see 100 people be baptized. I've never told you that. I didn't announce it. I'm not setting a goal. We don't have a chart on the wall. We're marking it off. We're not. It's not about the number of people. One is significant. Amen. But I don't even know why, but somehow in my heart, I just begin to pray, God, I wonder. Now, that's a pretty big prayer, don't you think, when the previous six months we only baptized one person. To say, how are you going to go from one to, to 100? But can I tell you that in 2023, 101 people were baptized here in our church. God did it. What the Lord is in. What the Lord's in. Now, I won't tell you what my number is for this year. No, just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't have a number. Uh, but we're so excited to see what God is doing. Let me talk about baptism for a moment. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. The last two verses of the chapter. Verse number 20 of Romans chapter 5. This is what the Apostle Paul wrote. He says, the law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. I'll talk about that in a moment. But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Uh, if you highlight in your Bible, on your Bible app, or if you have a pen and you write or highlight in your Bible, that's a great verse for you to underline. Notice what it says. Where sin increased, grace increased all the more. He goes on to say, so that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace may reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Now chapter 6, verse 1, Paul asks the question, what shall we say or what should our response be to this amazing grace of God? What should our response be? What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? And Paul says, by no means. If you're familiar with the language in the King James Version, he says, God forbid. In other words, now that I've come to be a Christ follower, now that I've placed my faith in Jesus and God's grace is so wonderful and so abundant in my life, is it okay for me just to keep on sinning? Can I just keep on living an ungodly lifestyle? Should I, is it okay? Does it not matter? Because I'm under grace, so you know, it really doesn't matter how you live. And he's saying, by no means, that's not what I'm saying here. God forbid that we would live that way. And he goes on to explain, he says, we are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? 
And he's making the argument about a person who has passed away. You know, when you go to a funeral service and if you have uh, the casket there, perhaps there's a cremation and the urn is there and they have a picture of the person, that person has passed away from this life, sin is no longer a problem for that person. Temptation can walk in front of the casket and they're not tempted to get up and respond to that temptation. Why? It has no bearing on that person's sin, has no bearing on that person's life because they have died. And Paul's saying to us that when we come to Christ, we are to die to the old man. We are to die to the old self. We're to die to the before Christ person. That life of where we live for ourselves, we live for our selfishness, we live for our own foolishness, recklessness, do whatever we want to do. We just ran with the world, we just live that life. And, and he, Paul says that when we come to Christ, we should die to that and be raised to new life that just as Jesus died, amen and was raised again we too died to the old man and were raised up to new life in Christ now let me ask you a question don't raise your don't raise your hand but how many of you have ever sinned since you came to Christ I told you not to raise your hand man. well that's everybody in the room isn't it how many of you sinned this week no 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 just kidding <laughs> or this morning <laughs> This is why we're still in our carnal man. We still have a flesh. I mean, go ahead and pinch yourself. Are you still alive? You still have flesh, right? And we're, we're in this world, and we, we still struggle in this world. But what should be happening in the life of a believer is that we're growing in Christ's likeness. We're growing in what's called sanctification. Sanctification is the process of spiritual growth. It means we are letting go of the old life and we're taking on more of Christ. So that over a period of time, as we begin to pursue Christ, serve Jesus, we're in the word, we're coming to church, we're growing as a Christian, we're letting go of the old life and we're taking on the new life in Christ. And that's why Paul would later write, he said, I die daily. What is he saying? I'm trying every day to die to the old man, the old life. I don't like that old man. That's not who I want to be. I'm dying to that old man, and I'm coming now to, to new life in Christ. Paul says, we are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Now notice verse 3 and 4. This is my text this morning. Paul says, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Now let me talk to you about these verses of Scripture just for a moment of what Paul's saying here. And then I want to kind of get into some nuts and bolts of baptism, if you will, the what and the why behind water baptism. Paul says in these last verses of Romans chapter 5, he says, when the law came, trespasses increased. What he's referring to is the awareness of our sin. Now, when there is no law, there's no awareness that we're breaking a law. You might even say, I didn't even know that it was a law. But once you knew that it was a law, it brought an awareness to the fact that you were, you were, you were breaking that law. When the law came, when God gave the law to the children of Israel on Mount, Mount Sinai, and God began to give his law, God's guidelines for our living, then it became clear to us, it became apparent to us of what was right and what was wrong. It wasn't just in our own mind. It wasn't just in our conscience. We had, we had crystal clear outlines of God's law. And once we knew God's law, then in our own lives, sin increased in a way because we became aware of our own sins and our own failures and our mistakes. When we get into this book and we read the Word of God, the Holy Spirit is going to speak to us about our sin. The Holy Spirit is going to speak to us about our life. Life. The Holy Spirit is going to challenge us. How many of you have been reading Scripture and the Spirit of God spoke to you and said, hey, that's not how I want you to live. Th those words, that attitude, the motive of your heart, those actions, that doesn't please me. We learned it from the Word of God. But thankfully, we're not just bound to the law. We now have grace. We live in the dispensation or the era of God's grace to us. And that's why Paul says, where sin increased, grace increased all the more. And this is so fundamental for our thinking and our understanding because it's likely that there are people in this room and people watching online who you think God could not possibly love you, God could not possibly save you and forgive you of your sins because you are convinced that you've done too much. You've gone too far. And in your own thoughts, you've said to yourself, why would God love somebody like me? 
How can God forgive somebody like me? Can I tell you, this room is filled with people like you. It's amazing how we think we're so bad and everybody else is, oh, that church, there's a bunch of holy, holy people. No, 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 no. No, we all have a story. We all have failures. We all have mistakes. But we've experienced the grace of God. If there's anything that we have in common today, for those of you who are Christ followers, is that we have received his wonderful grace. So let me tell you today, can I just tell you on the authority of the word of God today, friend, you have not gone too far. You have not done too much. Amen. Can I tell you today that you cannot out sin the grace of God. Amen. Where sin increases, he says, grace increases all the more. But since we receive this amazing grace, Paul asks the question, some of you might be thinking, well, does it even matter how I live my life? And Paul says, oh, yes, it does matter. God is a process. And if you keep reading Romans, he's going to teach us that process of how do we become a Christ follower and what does the Christian life look like? And God's grace and his Holy Spirit is at work in our lives to help us. Aren't you thankful today that we're not trying to be like Jesus through our own efforts, just at our own carnal abilities, our fleshly abilities. The Holy Spirit is at work within us to teach us and to help us and to lead us and to guide us and to help us grow into Christ-likeness. You're not in this by yourself. You're not in this by yourself. But Paul does ask an important question. If we die to sin, how, how can we keep on sinning? Baptism then, Paul says, verse 3, is a picture of the death of our old life. When we stand in that water, it's a picture. When you're standing in the water, it's a picture of Christ on the cross. When you are put under that water, it is a picture of of the burial of Jesus. And when you are raised up out of that water, it is a picture of the resurrection of Jesus. Baptism is a picture of the death of our old life. Paul said in verse three, don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? But here's what's exciting. Baptism portrays our new life in Jesus. It portrays our new life in Christ. In verse 4, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too, we too, elbow somebody and say we too, right? You and me. We too can be raised to new life. Does new life sound good to anybody here today? How about some new life, everybody? New life. Oh, new life, everybody. And it just reminds me today, I just want to remind you today, Jesus did not go to the cross so you'd have a better life or a modified life or an improved life. Jesus went to the cross so that you could have new life, everybody. New life. New life in Jesus. New life in him. So what is baptism? Let's work on the nuts and bolts here. What is water baptism? Well, baptism is a ceremony in which a person who has placed their faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins is immersed in water, put down in water, and raised back up out of that water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Water baptism is a public declaration of your faith and your identity as a follower of Jesus. It's an illustration, a public illustration of what Christ has done in your life. It's so interesting when you read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the eyewitness testimony of Jesus, that in Jesus' earthly ministry, the very first thing Jesus does is he gets baptized. Before any miracles, before any teaching, the very first thing Jesus does is he goes to the Jordan River where his cousin John the Baptist is baptizing people who have repented of their sins, and he asks his cousin John to baptize him. And John's like, I know who you are. Uh, you, you need to baptize me. And he, Jesus insisted and John baptized Jesus there. And the Bible talks about the voice from heaven and the dove representing the Holy Spirit and the voice of the Father saying, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. The first thing Jesus does in his earthly ministry is to be baptized. Why? To be an example for us. Jesus is our supreme example. To be an example for us. But it's also interesting, not only does Jesus begin his ministry of baptism, but the very last thing that Jesus says before he ascends back to the Father is that we are to be baptized. Amen. So Jesus bookends his ministry 
with an example to be baptized and he ends it with an instruction that we are to be baptized as Jesus says in the Great Commission that we are to baptize and to make disciples of all nations. Let me just say this to you. We cannot minimize what Jesus emphasized. That's a good place to say amen again, I tell you. I'm on a roll today, I tell you. We cannot minimize what Jesus emphasized. We cannot say as a church, yeah, baptism is not that important. It's, and, you know, some people want to do that. It's not, you know, it doesn't really mean anything. And, and that leads me then to, I, I think, a couple of errors on baptism. The first error in the church can be that people think that the physical act of water baptism is what saves us. And that would be wrong. There's 30 or so people that were in the baptism class I taught this morning before service. I told them what I always tell every baptism class, that baptism in water does not save you. And if you come to be saved through baptism, you need to know that's not what saves you. And if you have not been saved, you have not placed your faith in Jesus, you have not confessed Jesus as Savior and Lord, please do not get up in the baptismal tank to be baptized because we're going to ask you in front of everybody. So maybe you need to wait, or maybe today's your, your day of salvation, and then, then you can get baptized. But there are those who think that the physical act of baptism, if baptism by itself could save us, that would mean works can save us. And Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, we're not saved by works, we're saved by grace through our faith in Christ. That's one error in the church. The second error in the church are those who say baptism is not important because, well, after all, baptism doesn't save us. So if it doesn't save us, then why is baptism important? And I would say to them, you cannot be obedient to Jesus without baptism. Amen. Jesus commanded us to be baptized. So what is baptism? Well, baptism is not a condition of our salvation, but it is evidence that we have been saved. People who are saved get baptized. And we see this throughout the scripture. Remember, if you've read in the, in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, on the great day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit is outpoured and the church is born, the Bible says that in response to Peter's very first sermon, how many people got saved that day? 3,000 people got saved on that day. And they asked Peter, what should we do? And Peter's response to the 3,000 was repent and be baptized. And repeatedly throughout the New Testament, we see this process being followed people repent and quickly they are baptized not years later but quickly baptism follows uh, their repentance and their confession in christ so baptism is not a condition of our salvation but it is an evidence uh, that we are saved now i've met people throughout the years who love jesus and they serve god but they've never been baptized they never saw baptism as something important for their life they never saw it as a priority but can I remind you today baptism is something that Jesus commanded us to do it is not an option for the believer it's something we do as soon as we believe baptism is an outward visible sign of an inward spiritual grace when you're baptized in water you are letting everybody know what Jesus has done on the inside of your life in other words, baptism is a sign or a symbol that represents our acceptance of God's grace and the repentance of our sins. It's so important that in the New Testament, baptism, the word baptize, is mentioned 77 times in the New Testament. Don't you think when something is repeated that often, it has some significance to us? You know, originally in the Greek language, the word baptize or baptism, the word baptize was not uh, a, it was not a church word. It was not a religious, it was not even a religious term at, at all. It was not a Christian term. It was not a Catholic term. It was a Greek term. The New Testament is written primarily in the Greek language. The Greek word for baptize, baptizo, meant to dunk or to dip, to plunge, to submerge, or to immerse. And this is why we baptize by immersion. The word baptized means to put under water. And as I mentioned, it was originally not even a religious word at all. The word baptizo in the Greek would be used uh, to talk about maybe a, a, a ship that was sunk in battle. 
the ship went down under the water. Or, or someone who was taking a piece of cloth and they dipped it into a bucket of dye to change the color. It was just a word that meant to immerse or to submerge 77 times. It reminds us of the significance of what we are about to do today. You know, I've talked to people in the church who expressed to me, Pastor Laura and I, I don't feel like I'm ready to be baptized. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not ready to be baptized. And I'm not exactly sure what they mean by that. What I think perhaps they mean by that is they, they feel like they need to grow more in their faith. Or they feel like they need to be more spiritually mature before they are baptized in water. But can I, can I tell you today that baptism is not a matter of readiness. Baptism is a matter of obedience. The New Testament pattern, as I mentioned, we read through the scripture, we notice that people are baptized quickly after coming to faith in Christ and putting their faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord. So we need to know that baptism is not a mark of spiritual maturity, but simply a step, your next step of obedience to Christ. And so today, let me encourage you with these words. You don't have to wait until you feel like you're a spiritually strong person to be baptized. It's just an obedience issue, not a spiritual maturity issue. And I've noticed, can I tell you? I've noticed that sometimes delayed obedience often leads to disobedience. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, his final words before his ascension back to the Father. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today, this church we're going to obey the command of Jesus in this scripture. Jesus said in John 14, 15, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. Finally, baptism identifies me as a follower of Jesus. Perhaps today in this room, you're a guest here today, and we're so, so honored that you're here today. But maybe one of these individuals who are being baptized today invited you to come today. And they invited you to come be a part of witness this such an important moment in their, their life today. When you see them baptized in the baptismal tank in just a few moments, it's going to identify them. You're going to leave here knowing that these people identify with Jesus. You're going to leave here today knowing they are followers of Christ. Baptism is the public declaration of our faith in Jesus. But it's also about identity. I like to think about it this way, you know, 30 years, almost 31 years ago, my beautiful wife, Linda, here on the front row, she and I, we stood in front of our preacher, and we made our vows to God and to one another, and our pastor asked us, Are you, will you exchange rings, and we had purchased rings, and our little, little tiny bitty credit card we had, and we bought some, bought some rings, and I placed a ring on Linda's finger. And she put this very ring 30 years ago on my finger, and I've worn it ever since. And what, is, what does a ring stand for? It's identification. It means it's a public, visible sign to everybody. That man has made a commitment to someone. That man, man has made a vow to someone. It's letting everybody know. Now, you don't have to wear a ring. Perhaps you're not a jewelry person. I'm not really a jewelry person, but you know, perhaps... You, you, you just, I, I don't like rings, or maybe you work construction and you don't want to get in the way or whatever. A ring ne doesn't necessarily make you married, right? You have to make vows. We have license with the state, but most importantly, we make vows to God and to our, to our spouse. It's, it's a private moment. But we took the step to do something more than the private moment and do something public that lets everybody know that we identify with Jesus. You had a private moment, maybe in the service, you raised your hand and you prayed a sinner's prayer and said, Jesus, come into my heart and my life. Or maybe you're at home or you're on the highway. Wherever you were, you had a moment with God and you put your faith in Jesus. But baptism is that public moment. And oh, it's so very, very important as we say from this day forward. The Apostle Paul said in Colossians chapter 2, verse 12, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Isn't that good, everybody? What a great verse. What a great verse. So here's what we're going to do today. Those of you who are going to be baptized right now, in fact, our baptism team, we have a volunteer team today, I'm going to ask you to stand up at this time and exit out into the hallway here. So if you're getting baptized today, and along with our baptism team, why don't you stand up? Let's give them a hand, everybody. Come on.
Come on, let's celebrate. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And while they're stepping out, the worship team is going to join me here on the, on the platform. This morning, we celebrate with those who are being baptized as a sign of their faith in Jesus. But perhaps today, perhaps today, there are people in this room or people watching online who have never made a decision to put their faith in Christ. Maybe you would say today, I've never trusted Jesus as my Savior and my Lord. I'm just trusting myself. The Bible says that our own good deeds, our own improved behavior, getting our act together, would never be sufficient to satisfy the justice of a righteous and holy God for all that we've done wrong. But Jesus went to the cross and he took his, our sins upon himself. And once and for all, Jesus paid the awful penalty for our sins out of his love for us. That's what Jesus has done. And we put our faith in him by saying, Jesus, I confess you as my Savior and my Lord. I invite you to come into my heart and to forgive me of my sins. I believe you died and rose again as payment for my sins. And today I'm trusting not my good works, but I'm trusting your good works of the cross for my salvation. And the Bible says, the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Do you know what that means, everybody? That means whosoever. That means you. That means me. That means all of us. If we just call on his name, God out of his grace would save us. Water baptism is not a Christian ritual or tradition. Baptism is a statement. My old life is behind me, and now I'm a brand new person in Christ Jesus. Would you bow your head in this room today? All over this room, holding steady. Just a quiet moment, a reverent moment. I wonder today if there might be some in this room who've never placed their faith in Jesus. And today, you want to step across the line of faith and say, Jesus, I put my faith in you. Come into my heart and life. Save me. Forgive me. Make me clean. Make me new. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in heaven. I want the promise of eternal life. Maybe you've never trusted Christ as your Savior and Lord, but today, today's your day. With our heads bowed, I wonder if that might be you. You might be willing to take a courageous step and lift your hand and let me know. I just want to pray for you today. I'm not going to call you out or embarrass you. But today, if that's you, today you say, Pastor Lord, today is my decision day. Today I need Christ in my life. If that's you, would you just slip your hand up today and let me lead you in prayer today? Yes, thank you. Yes. Just hold it up. Yes, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. I saw five people raise their hand in this house today. We praise God for that. We praise God for that. Thank God. Thank God. So let's pray together. And here's what we're going to do with our heads bowed. Those of you who raised their hand today, this is a moment of sincerity in your heart and your life. God will receive you. He will not turn you away. Put your faith in him today. Church family, why don't you pray with me? Let's say this out loud. Heavenly Father, I come to you today because I need you in my life. With my heart, I believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again as payment for my sins. With my mouth, I confess Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart and life. Wash my sins away. Forgive me. Make me clean and new. I repent of all of my sins. And now I want to know you and serve you. From this day forward, I give my heart and life to you. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Now I want, with our heads bowed, one more time, hold steady, everybody. With our heads bowed, would you just take a moment and be very reverent. With our heads bowed, there are individuals in this room 
right now. Perhaps those five of you who just gave your life to Christ, today you'd like to be baptized. Perhaps there's others of you in this room, you've been, you've been wanting to get baptized, you've been thinking about baptism, you intended to get baptized, but so far you've not done it. And today, your heart's beating in your chest, and that's a good thing. Today you're a little nervous, maybe it's a little, feel a little tension, but today the Holy Spirit is prompting your heart to be baptized today. So with no one looking around, I want to invite you today, if you're ready to be baptized today in obedience to Jesus, with no hesitation, I want you to step up right now, stand up right now, with no one looking around, stand up, go out into the hallway, our team is there to help you today and to serve you, our baptism team is there, go ahead and stand up, no one's looking, just go ahead and stand up and step out, be courageous today. Don't leave here and say, I wished I'd got baptized. Don't leave here today and say, I should have been baptized. Today, just obey what God is asking you to do. Go ahead and step out right now. We think about who should be baptized. I think there's three groups of people. First are those who have placed their faith in Jesus and who have not been baptized in water. You should be baptized. I'd also suggest that those of you in this room who've been baptized at the decision of someone else and it was not your decision, you should be baptized as a sign of your faith. Perhaps when you were a child, your parents had you baptized into the church, but it was not your decision to follow Christ. I would encourage you today to make it your own decision and be courageous and be baptized. Perhaps there are those in this room who years ago you were baptized, but you know that at some point you walked away from Christ. You turned your back on God, you backslid and went away, but you come back to the Lord. Perhaps you would like to renew your faith in Christ and be baptized once more. You can step out right now, let our team assist you. We have everything that you need today to be baptized today. We thank God for what he's doing. Let me pray right now over the baptism candidates, and then we're gonna, Worship here when they're ready. They're going to open the door here in a moment. Would you bow your heads and pray with me today? Father, we thank you for these men and women and young people who are going to get baptized today. Lord, we celebrate their faith in you. We celebrate their courage. We celebrate that they're going public and they're letting everybody know what Jesus has done. I pray that you would bless them on this very important day of their life and let this be the next step of their spiritual journey and spiritual growth. And may they continue to grow and become all, Lord, that you would have for them to be. And bless our church, Lord, as we celebrate together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's stand. Let's get into some worship as we get ready to celebrate with those who are being baptized this morning. One thing we know is that Christ is our firm foundation, the rock on which we stand this morning. Come on, let's praise him. Christ is my firm foundation. The rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus.
that God is with us every single day. Oh, yes he is, yes he is, yeah. Rain came away blue when my house was built on you and I'm safe with you I'm gonna make Everybody say rain came. excited that we've welcomed them into God's family with us. So first up, we have Nick Costello. All right, Nick, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose again? Yes. And do you now confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? Yes. And is it your desire to serve Jesus all the days of your life. Yes. By your profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> Next up, we have Keith Swint. <laughs> I got the thumbs up on pronouncing the last name right, so. Jesus died on the cross and rose again as payment for your sins. Yes. Do you now confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? Yes. And is it your desire to follow him for the rest of your life? Yes. By your in the faith, and I'll baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Next up, we have James Moore. Now, 
Now, do you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again for your sins? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And is it your desire to serve him the rest of your life? Yes. By your trust in the faith, and I'll baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Next up, we have Ron Rodriguez. Awesome. Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again as payment for your sins? Yes. Do you now confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? Yes. Is it your desire to serve him the rest of your life? Yes. Are you in the faith and I'll baptize you in the Father? Son, and Holy Spirit. Next up, we have a family starting with Patrick Ortega Sr. Glasses off, good choice. Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe Jesus died on the cross and rose again as payment for your sins? Yes. Do you now confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? I do. Is it your desire to serve him for all the days of your life? I will. By your profession of faith, and I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now his son, Patrick Ortega, Jr. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? Yes. Do you now confess him as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you commit to following him for the rest of your life? Yes. By profession of faith, and I'll baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and now we have Heather Ortega. Do you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again for your sins? Yes. Do you now confess him as Lord and Savior? Yes. And now, it is, it is it your desire to serve him for the rest of your life? Yes. By your profession of faith, and I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Next up, we have Des Deshaun Hutchinson. And do you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again for your sins? Yes. And do you confess him as your Savior and Lord? Yes. And you commit to following him for the rest of your life? Yes. By your profession of faith, and I baptize you in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Next up, we have Stephanie Hutchinson. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Yes. You now confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Yes. And you commit to following Him for the rest of your life. Yes. By your profession of faith, and I'll baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Next up, we have brothers Rylan Reyes and Jace Reyes. First time for a double take. All right. Now, do you both of you boys, do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? Yes. Awesome. You now confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yes. And you commit to following him for the rest of your life. Yes. Awesome. I'll baptize him first, okay? Yes. <laughs> Are you here, profession of faith, and I'll baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your profession of faith, and I'll baptize you as well by the Son. God, sorry. <laughs> Father. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Next up, we have Natalie Quesada. Have 
be one of my youth students. Woo! And let me tell you, her along with other youth students, we're all going to youth convention on Friday, and they have it memorized to the day, hour, second that we get to leave. So Natalie, I'm so excited for this moment. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? Awesome. Do you not confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? Do you commit to following him for the rest of your life? By professing of faith, and I'll baptize you in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Next up, we have Ruth Ubeda. <laughs> now, do you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? Yes. And you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And is it your desire to serve Jesus for the rest of your life? Yes. And I'll baptize you in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Next up, we have Elvis Barrera. Woo! Now, do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? Do you confess Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Is it your desire to serve Jesus for the rest of your life? And I'll baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Woo! Next up, we have Patrick Simon. Now, do you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? Yes. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? Yes. And is it your desire to follow him for the rest of your life? Yes. We refresh in the faith, and I'll baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Next up, we have James Maldonado. It's a big moment. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? Yes. Do you now confess him as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And do you commit to following him for the rest of your life? Yes. By your profession of faith, and I'll baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Lost something, it's okay. <laughs> Next up, we have Vincent Maldonado. died on the cross and rose again for your sins. Yes. And you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yes. And are, is it your desire to serve Jesus all the days of your life? Yes. Awesome. By your profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> One moment as we switch out. Let's say thank you to Pastor Rick. A, call it a shift change right here. We're excited to celebrate with Laura Bronza, who's going to be baptized. She's coming down this morning. <laughs> Laura, have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes. Is it your desire to serve him the rest of your life? Yes. Awesome. Based on your profession of faith and your willingness to serve him for the rest of your life, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's welcome Noel. Come on down. Noel. Well, all right, brother. God bless you. Excited to celebrate with you today. Have you accepted the Lord Jesus as your heart as your personal yes. Savior? Amen. And is it your desire to serve him all the days of your life? Yes. Praise God. Based on your profession of faith and your willingness to serve him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, let's welcome little Danny Garcia. Little Danny with a big decision today. We're excited, Danny, for you. Have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your personal savior? Yes. Yes. And is it your desire to serve Jesus for the rest of your life? Yes. It's a good decision. 
based on your profession of faith and your desire to serve him, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Michael Garcia, come on down, brother. Praise God. Michael, have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes. Amen. And is it your desire to serve him all the days of your life? Yes. Praise God. Well, based on your confession of faith and your desire to serve him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations, brother. Congratulations. All right, let's welcome Sarah as she comes down this morning. All right, Sarah. It's nice and warm in here, right? Sarah, have you accepted the Lord Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior? And is it your desire to serve him all the days of your life? Praise God. Well, based on your profession of faith and your willingness to serve him all the days of your life, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations. All right. Let's welcome Lori. Lauren. Lauren, come on down. God bless you. Nice and warm. Yeah, it is. Have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes. Praise God. And is it your desire to serve him the rest of your life? Yes. All right. Well, based on your profession of faith and your desire to serve him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Oh! Good job. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. David Quinn, come on down, brother. Good job. How are you? All right. Yes, it's good. David, have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your personal Savior? I did. All right. And is it your desire to serve him for the rest of your life? Yes. Good decision. Well, based on your profession of faith and your willingness to serve him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations, brother. Lucille, come on down, Lucille. How are you? I'm good. All right. You excited? Yeah. It's exciting. Are you, have you accepted Jesus into your heart? As your Lord and personal Savior. Yes. Awesome. And is it your desire for the rest of your life to serve and follow Him? Yes. Based on your profession of faith and your willingness to serve and follow Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Cassandra. Cassandra. All right. Let's celebrate with Cassandra this morning. Big decision. Good decision. Have you accepted Jesus in your heart, Cassandra? Yes. Is it your desire to serve him for the rest of your life? Wonderful decision you've made. Based on your profession of faith and your desire to serve him for the rest of your life, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations. <laughs> Natalia, come on down, Natalia. All right. Isn't it amazing when young people put their faith in Jesus, amen, and profess Jesus as Savior? Congratulations. Have you accepted Jesus into your heart? Yes. Awesome. And is it your desire to serve him for the rest of your life? Yes. Wonderful. Based on your profession of faith and your willingness to serve him for the rest of your life, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations. Congratulations. My brother John. So excited, so excited for you. All right. John, have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes. And is it your desire to serve him the rest of your life? Yes, it is. Based on your profession of faith and your willingness to serve him for the rest of your life, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. And if you're wondering, this is a workout. <laughs> Erica, John's wife, come on down. It's a beautiful thing when couples do this together, amen? Erica, have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your personal Savior? Amen. And is it your desire to serve him all the rest of your life? Absolutely. Praise God. No hesitation right there. Based on your profession of faith and your willingness to serve him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations. Oscar, come on down, brother. You're giving me the big voice today. So excited for you, brother. Oscar, have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes. 
Is it your desire to serve him all the rest of your life? Yes. Based on your profession of faith today and your willingness to serve him, it is my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jasmine, come on down. Dad, right? So this is Jasmine, daughter. Dad and daughter right here. Pretty amazing. Amazing. Jasmine, have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your personal savior? And is it your desire to serve him all the rest of your life? You made an amazing decision. Based on your profession of faith and your willingness to serve him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations. Congratulations. Abram, come on down, brother. All right. All right. How are you? Yeah, good, good, good. Have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your personal savior? Yes. Amazing. And is it your desire to give him the rest of your life? Good decision. Well, based on your profession of faith and your willingness to serve him, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations. <laughs> Dominic, Dominic Garcia will welcome you this morning. It's warm, right? It's warm. Yeah, it's warm. <laughs> Dominic, have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your personal savior? Yes. And is it your desire to serve him the rest of your life? Yes. Amazing. Based on your profession of faith and your willingness to serve him, I baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations. Congratulations. Tino. Oh. Tino. So proud of you, what a privilege it's been to journey with you, Tino. We're so excited for you. Have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes, I have. Praise God. And is it your desire to serve him for the rest of your life? Yes. Praise God. Well, based on your profession of faith today, your willingness to serve him, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations, brother. Congratulations. So happy for you. Lorenzo, come on down, Lorenzo Fuentes. Yeah, yeah, leave your towel there. Come on, brother. It's warm. It's ready for you. All right, Moses. Oh, yeah, that's more than warm. Yes. Whoa. All right, Lorenzo. Have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your personal Savior? Yes, I have. Praise God. And is it your desire to serve him all the days of your life? Yes. Based on your profession of faith and your willingness to serve him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There we go. Oh. Oh. Congratulations. All right. I'll yeah, take that towel. Oh, yeah, towel All right. All right. Leopoldo Perez, come on down, brother. Oh. All right, make sure we got your name right. Nice to you. Okay. Praise God. Have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your personal savior? Amen. And is it your desire to serve him all the days of your life? Praise God. Based on your profession of faith and your desire to serve him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Nico, Nico, little Nico. Say hi, Nico, say hi to everybody. Y'all can't see him, can you? It's all right. Did you see everybody? All right. Have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your personal savior? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to serve Jesus for the rest of your life? Yes? He's nodding his head yes. Based on your profession of faith and your desire to serve Jesus, I get to baptize you this morning in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Harold, I am not lifting you up, brother. <laughs> oh, man, so good. So good. What a privilege and honor it is for me to be able to baptize you. I've known you for so long. You accepted Jesus as your heart as your personal savior? I mean, is it your desire to serve him the rest of your life? Based on your profession of faith and your willingness to serve him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Congratulations, brother. Congratulations. James Carrillo. Big day, James. Big day. All right, James. Yes. What a blessing you are. Thank you. Have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior? I have. Amen. And is it your desire to serve him all the days of your life? Yes, it is. Based on your profession of faith to here today and your desire to serve him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Richard, come on down, brother. Let's give Richard a hand. Richard, have you accepted Jesus and Jehovah as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes. Amen. And is it your desire to serve him the rest of your life? Yes. Based on your profession of faith here today and your willingness to serve him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Congratulations, brother. Thank you, Lord. Congratulations. Thank you. Right. Miguel, come on down, Miguel. What a testimony. Let's welcome Miguel. You're about to dump yourself there for a second. <laughs> Let me help you. Yes, sir. Miguel, have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your Absolutely. Lord and personal Savior? Yes. And is it your desire to serve him all the days of your life? Yes. Based on your profession of faith and your desire to serve and follow Jesus, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. Yeah, we'll take it right now. Yes, Two more. Oh, Dominic? Dom, oh, Dom. Oh, right here. Oh, we're switching. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And our last one. Last but not least, Dom Padrone. Now, she asked me to baptize her because we served as youth leaders together under the previous youth pastor. <laughs> She's been part of our, I can call her family, just yep. men on Thanksgiving and Christmases. <laughs> we don't know if she's gonna show up. She usually does, unannounced, but we love it. <laughs> but I had the honor to be her youth pastor as she served under my leadership. So Dom, today's a day. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on, your, on the cross and rose again for your sins? Yes. Do you now confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. And you commit to following him for the rest of your life? Yes. Amen. By your profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can we give just one more shout of praise for our baptisms this morning? Let's all stand, everyone. Let's stand together. Stand together. Wow. How exciting was that? Praise God. Praise God. I don't know if I, if I did my math right. I think that's 42 people who are baptized today. We praise God for that. Praise God for that. What a joy it's been to worship together today. Our prayer team is coming now at this time as we close our service. If you'd like prayer, maybe you'd like to put your faith in Jesus. Maybe you have a need in your family. Maybe you need healing. Maybe you'd just like someone to pray with you. So prayer team members are coming at this time. And at the end of the service here, they'll pray with you. We're so glad to have you here today. If we can serve you in any way, stop at the Connection Center out there. Let us know if we can serve you, be a blessing in your life anyway. Let's thank God one more time. Father, we thank you for what you did today. Our hearts are full, Lord, as we celebrate the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord, for all these individuals who said yes for the rest of my life. My desire is to serve you and to know you. We give you praise, God, for all you're doing in this church and our hearts and our lives. We love you, Lord. As we go out the doors of this church today, may we represent Christ to this community that so desperately needs you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you.